Take your Bibles, turn to Romans chapter 8. Thank you, Pastor Brett. Now talk about, uh, we are, we believe in, uh, as uh, Robert Morris wrote a book, The God I Never Knew, a Holy Spirit. There are, uh, there's one God, absolutely one God. He reveals himself in three persons, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. And uh, Jesus chose to, to leave this earth because in him being here, he was limited in that he was a man and he could only be where he was and minister to those he was with. And so that was limited as he would travel around of what he could do. And then uh, as others would speak of him, then uh, some would believe and call on the name of Jesus as the disciples went forward. But if you remember, when the gospel was spread, there was a day of Pentecost that took place, which is 50 days after Passover. It's a, it's a, it's, it was a, one of the feasts of God that God gave to Israel to, to recognize the coming of the Holy Spirit in a very special way. And this Holy Spirit was so important that Jesus sent it to earth sent his Holy Spirit to us, to abide in us, to be in us, to empower us, to embolden us, to speak truth to us. And so I, I, I say this to say that, that uh, there is no life in Christ apart from the Holy Spirit. Jesus is at the right hand of God the Father. And the, so we are a people of spirit. We are people of the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit have gifts and they're real. And they should be used in the church, multiple ones in, in different places. Uh, some of them are, 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 the, are the nine power gifts of the Spirit in 1 Corinthians chapter 11. There's others in, in other chapters in the Bible that are motivation gifts are gifts that God gives you like like. Uh, administration, or as the King James uses the word ruling, to organize, to administrate, or gift of mercy, or a gift uh, even of, of being a giver. Uh, and so we've seen many things. I have a friend that I used to work with, Steve Nordak, for many, many years. He said one of the gifts of the Spirit was slapping. And uh, <laughs> so you ever feel like slapping somebody? That would probably be a gift of the flesh. But it was he was just being humorous. Uh, uh, but anyway, did y'all think that was funny? Okay, if you knew him, you would. And anyway, so um, uh, it, it, you know, the Holy Spirit is so important in our life, we can't do without it. So, um, but you can't see him, and he's there even when you don't feel him, and he's within us, and he always, the Bible speaks in John when Jesus talks about him, he's there always to lead us into truth, to illuminate the book, the Word of God, and to exalt Jesus. He didn't come, the Bible says, to speak of himself, but to speak of Jesus. And he's in us. And turn to Romans 8, chapter 1. I want you to know that the law was weak and that we have flesh and we're sinful. And the law and, and the rules of the law of this book would not ever help anyone get to a place where they would be in a place were they were okay with God, or God was pleased. So until Jesus came, died on the cross, was buried and rose again, ascended into heaven, and sent his spirit, there is no way that a man could be right other than by the sacrifices of animals, of blood, of sacri sacrificial system to be right with God, and it was an on and on thing. But now, we are the people of the Spirit and are righteous through Jesus Christ. And the Holy Spirit brings Christ, convicts us, convinces us and convicts us and shows us of, of what is right and wrong, of sin, of righteousness, and of judgment to come. And so the Holy Spirit work is so important, not only in our living and the way we live, but our witnessing, in our praying, in everything we do. We are the people of the Spirit. 
Does you understand that? And there is a spirit language that the Holy Spirit will give you to pray. And I will tell you, when you have something traumatic happen in your life, you don't even know how to pray. Immediately, if you've given a spiritual language, you will begin to pray, and words of God's Spirit will pray the perfect prayer for you. And if you have not received a prayer language, a spiritual language, a Holy Spirit language, that God, God will give that to you. I believe it with all of my heart. Not everyone is meant to express that in a public setting or anyone else would know. It's mainly meant for personal prayer and praise. And I remind you, and I've said it many times, that Paul concludes, what then, what shall I do? I will pray with understanding. I will pray with the spirit language. I will worship. I will, I will uh, sing with understanding, and I will sing in a prayer language, in a spirit language, sing in the spirit. And he's definitely talking about that. He's definitely talking about spiritual language. But I'm not talking about that tonight, but I am saying this. I am saying that the Holy Spirit is important in our lives. It doesn't mean you don't have the Holy Spirit if you don't have a Holy Spirit language. But if you have Jesus, you have the Holy Spirit in your heart, and the Holy Spirit wants to give you more. He wants to equip you more with the prayer language, with power, with boldness, with giftings, and he'll flow through you. I had someone after early service say, I had a word from God, and they told me, and it was anointed. I said, why didn't you give it? I don't know. I was just fearful. I said, well, you should have given that from God. It was about a bowl. God was showing a bowl and how he, I forget how it went, but God just wanted to fill, feed his people, just pour the food of God's word uh, in this bowl and feed us. And uh, it, it was, I, that's, I didn't do it justice, but I'm telling you, it was a quickened spirit word for us from, from God through a person. And I, and I believe that. I, I, I believe God still does that. So Romans chapter 8, here we go. Therefore, there is now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. Now, the NIV leaves that little piece out. You walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. But it's there. And it's also <clears throat> implied all throughout Romans 8. You'll see it. And the condemnation is guilt. Our standing condemned to die. Judgment. And we are under judgment if we don't have Jesus Christ in our life, if we're not in Christ Jesus. And when you're in Christ Jesus, when it says who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit, that doesn't mean that makes you in Christ Jesus. No, that's the result of being in Christ Jesus. It's the natural outflow of being in Christ Jesus. And he says, for the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus, hath made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh, the law could not help us appease God or be right with God is what it's saying. Because our flesh is weak, we are sinful in flesh. There's no way the Old Testament system was ever going to make us right with God. God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin, when he died on the cross, as a man, with no sin, he became sin for us. He condemned sin in the flesh. Why? So that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. And there that same phrase again, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. The NIV and says, in order that the righteousness requirements of the law might be, might be fully met in us, who do not live according to the sinful nature, but according to the Spirit. In other words, your life isn't ruled by flesh, but it's led by Spirit. That's the outflow of Christ Jesus within us by His Spirit. That's the outflow. And then, here's a very important thing that we need to practice, that we need to walk in. Look at this. Those it says, for they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. The NIV says, those who live according to the sinful nature have their mind set on what the nature desires. Your heart, when you talk about your heart, you can't separate mind from heart. Let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus. And it talks about that... Uh, Thy word have I hid in my heart 
that I might not sin against thee. Well, you know it's not in your emotion. It's in your mind. God, the heart, it makes up both the mind. The soul is mind, will, and emotions. It's feeling, it's emotions, it's mind. The soul is mind, and it affects your will. The Holy Spirit is in all of it. I'm going to read that verse 5 again. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the Spirit... The things of the Spirit, they mind or they think of. How they, uh, it says they live in accordance with the Spirit, have their minds set on what the Spirit desires, the NIV says. Do we want what the Spirit desires for our life? Verse 6, it says this. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. The NIV says, the mind of the sinful man is death, but the mind controlled by the Spirit is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God. This NIV says the sinful man is hostile to God. In other words, your nature is to repel what God wants you to do. That's why fasting is so important. Because your flesh is strong. Everything we do in the natural world in this earth feeds flesh. Eating, interacting, everything, unless we interject spiritual things into it. Unless we learn to walk in the spirit and make a difference in the spirit. And we have to feed the spiritual man. We have to take time to do that. It says, uh, in verse 7, I'm going to read it again, verse 7. For to be carnally minded is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be, if you have a carnal mind. Uh, uh, and so the sinful mind or the mind of the flesh or whatever you want to say, it's not spirit mind. Verse 8 says, so then they that are, at, at, that are in the flesh cannot please God. How many of you are in your flesh right now? Yeah, you are, aren't you? You don't, you're, you're not a skeleton. It's not talking about that kind of flesh. It's talking about your human desires, that you do what you want, that you're not thinking about what God wants. You're not attentive to the Holy Spirit. And it says, but you are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit. If so be that the Spirit of God dwell in you. Now watch this verse. Now if any man, it means mankind, it means male and female, if any person have not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. You don't belong to Jesus unless you have the Spirit in you. In other words, when Jesus comes into your heart, he comes in by his Spirit. And that Spirit is an internal uh, uh, voice, an internal guide, a compass that takes the truth of his word and directs us and leads us and speaks to us. That Spirit is something that, that Paul says in Thessalonians is not to be quenched. It's not to be uh, 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 put out at all, but it's to be followed. Uh, don't quench the Spirit. Don't despise the working of the Spirit. Let the Spirit move in us. There are many times that as a church, there'll be someone you'll see, they'll be there, and you just say, Holy Spirit might speak to you to go pray with them, and you just slip out of your seat and slip over and just say, I just felt led to pray with you. Would you be okay with that? It's okay to say what you feel and say that and say, if not, it's okay. Because that's okay. But I'm telling you, we need to be led by the Spirit in, 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 in every situation, not only at church, but in the world. Uh, so if you, if you belong to Jesus, you have the Holy Spirit in you. And verse 10 says, and if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin. What does is, what is, uh, uh, Romans say, Paul say? Sin, John, James says, sin when it's finished brings forth death. Paul says that uh, sin brings death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. You see, you know why you, you look like, you know why Gary looks like he is? Because he's born into sin. He can't live perfectly, but he's, he's not evolving. He's devolving. You should take a look at him back there. Pastor Gary, you're looking devolving. You're welcome. Bless you. I'm trying to build you up in the spirit. And many, uh, some of you might be doing, looking like that. It's because this right here, Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but 
Here's the, about Christ being in you. The spirit is life because of righteousness. See, you will lay down. In other words, you're not going to live forever. Your body will die. Because we were born as sinners, we're not eternal the way Adam and Eve were originally made. Eternal never to die. Now, we're going to die, and we may suffer and die, and we may die in pain. I, I can't promise you. I know some people have faith to believe that that won't happen. They just lie down and go to sleep. That's great. But I've seen many people die suffering. I've seen others just roll over and just get exactly what they prayed for. I don't know. You know, I can't say what's going to happen to you. I think God has purposes not only in life, but in the, pa the process of passing. And it's not just always about the person lying there, but it's also about the people standing around, what God is doing in that moment that's beyond our understanding. But I'm telling you that the Spirit is life, it says, because of righteousness. The Holy Spirit uh, gives life. Verse 10 in the NIV says, the NIV says, if Christ is in you, your body is dead because of sin, yet your spirit is alive because of righteousness. I'm so thankful for that. The Spirit is alive in us, Christ. But the, if the Spirit, verse 11, of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his Spirit that dwelleth in you. In other words, when you die, when you're buried, just like Jesus rose as the first fruits, you're going to rise again. And that body will put on an eternal body that never again suffers or has pain or sickness, and there will be no more death there or no more parting. Verse 12, therefore, brethren, we are debtors. What do we owe a debt to? Not to the flesh to live after the flesh. Not to this body. Not to our sinful nature. In, in verse number 12 in the NIV, therefore, brothers, we have an obligation, but it is not to sinful nature, to live according to your sinful nature. You know what the sinful nature is. I don't need to go on. But verse 13, for if you live after the flesh, you shall die. But through the Spirit, but if you through the Spirit do mortify the deeds of the body, you shall live. You see, the Holy Spirit wants to set you free from the control of your flesh and sinful desires so that you don't live in bondage. See, Jesus didn't come as a sin eraser. He came as a sin deliverer. He, he said he will save us from our sins. He will help deliver us. He will help us walk in his fullness. But it's not about reading and then with your self-effort. It's about getting more of Jesus and more of the Spirit and what God's Spirit uses to, to make us strong is the Word. He feeds us, getting that in us and walking by the Spirit and hearing the Spirit and living in victory, living as an overcomer in Jesus Christ. It happens by being a spiritual people, by learning to hear and follow the leading of the Spirit and be sensitive to the Spirit, not quenching it at all. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. I believe a spiritual renewal, an awakening, is awaiting those who will tune themselves on a daily basis to be people of God's word and God's spirit, and they will hear and they will obey. What did he say in Revelation? He who hath the ear, hear what the spirit says. Over and over to the churches. He that hath an ear, hear what the spirit would say. And I'm saying today, in 2017, he's saying to his church in America, he that hath the ear and has the spirit, listen and hear what the spirit says. And when you are led by the spirit, God will take you in the paths and like the song Ocean says, he will sometimes take you deeper than you ever thought you could go. He will help you walk on water. He'll take you into places and put you into conversations and you will become his voice piece, his hands his heart, his eyes, and you will become a true soul winner. Because let me tell you what marks revival. What marks revival is not what happens in the church service. What marks revival is what happens when you go out of the church service. It's when you witness and when you win souls and when you pray in your closet like Jesus taught us to and when you open the book and you abide with him and you walk full of him. I'm gonna mention again, the world has a lot of cheap substitutes. 
Ephesians 5, 18 says, be filled with the Spirit. Do not be full of wine. Or, let's see, don't be drunk with wine where there's excess, but be full of the Holy Spirit. Singing, making melody in your heart, singing songs and hymns and spiritual songs uh, unto the Lord. You see, a cheap substitute to help you relax and give you peace and give you joy is a little liquor because it just just relaxes you. It just gives you that moment. No, the Bible says there's pleasure in sin for a time. And that's not the only type of thing that the world has to offer. There's, liquor comes in many forms. It comes in indulging in sports or in indulging in pleasure and in indulging in material things and in indulging in you name it, food, whatever it is. And I'm telling you the only way to get more of the Spirit is to have less of the flesh. And Jesus lived the fasted life, and he taught a fasted life, and he taught there was power in it because when you live a fasted life, you're alert more to the Spirit. If something happens to your eyes, you see things differently than you did. And I know that God's calling some of you, and it doesn't take many, but God's calling some of you to make a difference as the Holy Spirit works through you and flows through you, is you'll lay down your life, crucify that flesh daily, deny yourself, get on your own cross, and let the Holy Spirit flow through you. We need the fullness of the Spirit.